Between the Dead Sea Scrolls, the oldest biblical text in the world, and this microfilm, which contains the Bible and travel to the moon on board Apollo 14, there is a 2,000-year span. Both pieces are intended to show the uniqueness of the Bible. They're part of the Verbum Domini exhibit, which includes 150 other precious artifacts. Technology that we have today that didn't exist many years ago, we're able to look at the writing underneath writings. An example in this collection, it's called the Climactive Rescriptive, and in that there's a layer of Syriac writing, but underneath there you can barely see it but with the right lighting, it comes to life, and it's the, the oldest known complete uh, text in Palestinian Aramaic, the language of Jesus. The exhibit will be on display next to St. Peter's Square. Among the other treasured pieces are these papyrus scrolls, the oldest gospel text in the whole world. The entire Bible can be found inside this, the Codice Vaticanus, one of the exhibit's main draws. Many artifacts come from within the Vatican, but a majority are part of the private collection from the Green family, a wealthy American family which owns 44,000 items of a biblical nature. Well, we believe that the book in itself says that it will live forever. And so we believe that the story is for all people of all times. And so in that sense, we do believe that it is never ending and will have a message for people throughout the ages. Throughout the exhibit's journey, tracking the Bible throughout history, visitors will also find the Bodmer Papyri, which has the oldest known Lord's Prayer in recorded history. But there's more than just text in this exhibit depicting the Word of God. It includes these colorful Ethiopian and Russian icons, or these music sheets from medieval times when music became an integral part of worship. Sometime later, Luther parted ways with the church in Rome and translated the Bible into German. He himself drafted this copy. At about that same time period, missionaries carried the gospel around the world. In doing so, the need arose to translate the Bible to different languages like Cherokee in the United States, or in Chinese as this wooden piece depicting the Ten Commandments shows. Other hands, like those from astronaut Edgar Mitchell, took it even further, but definitely in a more compact format which condensed 1,245 pages of the greatest story ever told into just one and a half inches.